Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today I've got a question for you. Have you ever tried to connect your city directly to the freeway without using an interchange? How did it go? I bet traffic backed up on the freeway. I bet your city's streets also backed up. Maybe there were some collisions. It's a mess. That is why in real life, as well as in game, traffic managers and city planners use service interchanges to connect their city to the freeway. Today's episode of Cities Player Plans is all about service interchanges. So it's all about connecting your city to the freeway in a way that makes sense and is also congruent with real life traffic engineers and city planners and how they do things. Thank you for being here. Let's talk about interchanges. As we begin discussing interchanges in City Skylines 2, there's a huge distinction to be made immediately before we even look at the built-in interchanges. There are two types service interchanges, and system interchanges. You can see I've listed all of the built-in interchanges in City Skylines 2 in each category. This is a very incomplete list when compared to, say, the Wikipedia article, which is more complete in terms of real-world interchanges and intersections. But today, we're really here to talk about service interchanges specifically. Service interchanges are used to connect your city to the freeway as opposed to system interchanges, which are used to connect one freeway to another freeway. Another way to say that is that your highway on and off ramps are always a service interchange. So as traffic enters and leaves your local city streets, they need to be using a service interchange. If you have a highway or a freeway that goes around your city connecting to another freeway, you would need to use the appropriate system interchange instead. Let's start our discussion about the included service interchanges in City Skylines 2. Here is our first service interchange of the day. I believe the developers called it the Trumpet Roundabout. And this is a very unique design. It is a three direction interchange. It has a roundabout on the bottom left there instead of what would be a traffic light otherwise. I think it's pretty good for what it is. Uh, it can be built a bit more compact if you want, but this is fine. The interesting thing is actually in the description for me, a medium capacity suburban three-way hybrid interchange with a connection to a local road. Now, at first, I was thinking that maybe this was supposed to be connected to a local road, but let me show you what that actually does. I, I do not recommend doing this because it's bad, <laughs> but if we were to connect this down here, oh, come on in. That vehicle coming northeast now has no way to make a left onto the highway, which is not great, nor do the vehicles coming northwest here have the ability to turn left onto this local road. So I don't think that's what the game actually means. I don't think that's the intended use. What I think is actually going on here is this is supposed to be the local road. It is freeway. They've chosen to leave this as freeway. So what I might recommend doing instead, just to include ways to improve this sort of thing, I might actually recommend doing a local road, like say a four lane divided road, but I would recommend connecting that using the two lane highway roads, two lane freeways, something like that, and maybe turn off the traffic light there. And I think that is a good way to convert this into a more local interchange, rather than having three directions of freeway converging, you can use this as intended and have this be the, the local road for your city start. This service interchange is called the Partial Cloverleaf, one of my personal favorites. This happens to be an AB2 Partial Cloverleaf, so it's actually not the most efficient one, nor is it a full Cloverleaf, which has loops in all four quadrants. This one only features loops and ramps in two of the quadrants. Let's take a look at the description that the developers have given us. Partial Cloverleaf, an adaptable half Cloverleaf intersection that can support medium to high volumes of traffic. This is great. You could actually use these two quadrants for additional ramps if you wanted to give the uh, upper left-hand traffic a right turn off the highway or the upper traffic a right turn onto the highway going what I'll call Northwest again here. This is actually another type of partial cloverleaf, my personal favorite, the B4 Parklo. So this has ramps in all four quadrants, which is where the number four comes from. And the B means that the, the loops occur after the freeway crosses the arterial. Grade separated, of course. 
So an A4 park low would have loops in the opposite quadrants from this. That's a bit confusing, but the B4 is my favorite. I built this by hand. The road tools in this game are very, very satisfying. So dabbling and building your own interchanges is a really doable endeavor, in my opinion, more so than in the first game. Very, very flexible and very fun to do if you want to add a lot of capacity to these junctions. This example is called the Dumbbell Interchange in-game. I don't think that that's a complete name for it necessarily, or perhaps the Dumbbell Interchange can mean multiple different things. But you may notice this is very similar to our previous example, the AB2 Partial Cloverleaf. In fact, the topography is almost identical, except the intersections have been replaced with roundabouts. So really, if you wanted to make a different version of this, you could use the partial cloverleaf and then convert those intersections to roundabouts to get essentially the same result with this. Let's check what the developers say. A low capacity rural dumbbell interchange with a connection to a local road. I do think the roundabouts reduce capacity a bit, but as long as you're using it as intended as a lower capacity implement, then you're, then you're good. So this is sort of a dumbbell with loops, I would call it. So it's a dumbbell interchange, but with loops that come around and turn the left-hand turn into a right-hand turn, which may add a bit of capacity in some situations. So this is good. It is a lower capacity partial cloverleaf is, uh, is my assessment of it overall. This one is called the Teardrop Roundabout Interchange, and it is topographically exactly what I would call a dumbbell interchange. So the game, the devs have called that other one a dumbbell. I would say that this is actually what I know as a dumbbell interchange. It's the shape of a diamond, which if we have time, I'll talk about that later. But if if you take the, the ramps that I described earlier, that's exactly what this is, except with uh, aesthetically, there's a squished kind of peanut shape in the middle there, or a teardrop, I suppose they called it. But you could get the same result using the built-in roundabouts. If you just connect these roads together, use the built-in roundabouts there and erase the highway, topographically, this is actually a dumbbell interchange. They are calling it, uh, description-wise, it's a teardrop roundabout interchange with low traffic capacity. I agree with that. This has lower traffic capacity than the, the version with the loops, the one that they call the dumbbell. Uh, but this is also very small. So for a compact intersection used in a maybe a more rural context, this one works totally fine. You can see it's handling all this traffic okay, so it's, it's fine to a point. It will back up eventually as the roundabout, the approaches to the roundabout don't lend itself to much capacity, but for starting a city or in less dense areas, this will work out okay. I do want to point out a problem here with the functionality is this little little bit here is actually not connected. So just the way that the lane math works out in this, this lane is ineffective completely. Maybe it could be resolved by reducing these to one lane. Uh, let's, let's actually see what happens if I do that. This is probably my favorite improvement to the teardrop roundabout interchange that one can, can do by modifying the existing design. What I really did is deleted a few of the ramps, some of the curvy bits, and reconnected them directly to the road, which I made into a four-lane avenue. And then I just turned these into roundabouts. Uh, this is exactly what I would call a dumbbell interchange. Totally fine. All the lanes are usable. The one glaring issue is that there's yields in the center of it when really you would want this to be continuous and, and non-yielding there, but I'll give it a pass. That functionality may come in the future once our road services are a bit expanded. Now this segues directly into something I spoke about earlier. This is the diamond interchange. Here is your, your standard, what I would call a standard rural intersection in many, many places, and you can build it yourself. Here you can see how I modified the teardrop to just be a diamond. Of course, you can build this using an overpass instead. Instead of this grounded road, just make an overpass over the highway and connect these directly to the road and then out the other side and reconnect it to the, to the highway here. So this winds up being a signalized intersection. With the roundabouts, it's fine. You know, the dog bone is, is fine. Uh, without the roundabouts, it's also fine. So the lighted intersection is actually quite good. The lights seem to sense traffic pretty well. And this also splits up the phasing in such a way 
that the, the two-phase light actually works great on each of these. The default two-phase light works wonderfully. Uh, the diamond interchange, easily built, easily implemented, small, cheap. Uh, it's a glaring omission from the included intersections, but you can build it yourself very, very easily. Here's another one of my personal favorites. In-game, they call this the single point intersection. You may know it from the real world as a single point urban intersection. It's named as such because it can fit in smaller spaces, so it is rather narrow compared to many interchanges that include loops or flyovers. And this can go in a more urban setting where maybe there is blocks already built or buildings or development that already happened and you just want to shoehorn in the interchange and still have tons of capacity. It's essentially the same size as the diamond we spoke about earlier. In fact, you can always start with a diamond interchange and then with minimal effort, you can convert this to a single point interchange just by breaking off some of the roads. Let me show you what's going on under the, the hood here, metaphorically. All of the left turns benefit from being able to happen at the same time. So you can see this left turning traffic can go at the same time as its opposing traffic, just like the traffic coming off the highway should be able to go at the same time as the opposing traffic. I don't know that the light, the vanilla built-in only light we have access to currently, I don't know if it allows for proper left turning uh, happening, happening at the same time, but in the real world, that is the benefit as opposed to the diamond where the left turns are bound up on one another. So you can't have both of the left turns free flowing off the highway as they'll get stuck on each other when you get to this point. So I love the single point interchange. The one main critique that I have would be all of these merges and how it merges down, merge, 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 merge. I have a different way of building this. Let me, uh, let me show you what that might look like. This is Riverdale. It's the city that I've been building on stream for the last month or so. It's coming along great. I'm very happy with the, the downtown, the design, the train station. It's all, it's all coming together, but we're here to talk about the main intersection or the main interchange. Ignore the trams coming through. That's uh, not always the case for this interchange. It just happens to be the case today. But you can see how we've handled the left turns very similar, uh, similarly to the other version that we looked at. So this is one that I built by hand. And I love that it merges down very simply rather than the complicated wild merges that they built in. This is also a much smaller footprint. So compare this to the diamond. Here's a very standard diamond interchange. It could be built a bit shorter or a bit smaller, but here's a diamond meant to serve a more rural developing section of the map. To convert this to a single point interchange, all I'd have to do is make the lefts converge in the center. That's really it. I would just have to build some roads off of this and delete that center connection. I am also a fan of flaring out the right turns. So you'll see how the, the left turns flare to the left, the right turns flare out to the right. I guess my point is that all of these built-in interchanges, intersections as they're called in game, they can all be improved in one way or another, I think. I, I don't think any of the built-in designs are quite perfect. They're nice if you just want to place the interchange without thinking too hard, but really I get a lot of joy out of building them myself. So I really love building interchanges. I plan to do a whole series of tutorials on how I build them or different techniques that I come up with as, as I get better at this game versus the original city skylines. Thank you so much for hanging out and listening to me talk about service interchanges. This has been really good, I think. And I can't wait for the next episode where I'm going to discuss the system interchanges that connect highways to one another in City Skylines 2. That's all I've got for today. Feel free to uh, join over on Twitch if you want to hang out for a stream. But that's all I've got. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.